Bye, Steve. Well, Brother Steve is gone. We uh, got to get back to doing things here on the homestead. It's been a while because we've had a lot going on. So let's get things going. Let's get inside the house. Let's see what Kelly's doing. And uh, we got some stuff to tidy up here today while we got a little bit of time. Got a beautiful day here in December. Kelly's had the fact the cookie factory going this morning. She made a whole bunch of her famous sugar cookies. They're amazing. She's making those for the local nursing home for all of the residents and the staff members there. She also made cards for all of the people that reside there because not a lot of them uh, have family that come and visit them all the time so Kelly likes to send them cards and bring them a little Christmas cheer got a whole lug full of Christmas sugar cookies they're so fantastic they just melt in your mouth I wish you could taste one well Kelly's got all of her cookies packaged up for me to take in in the morning when I go in for coffee and she's vacated the kitchen so it's my turn in here before I go outside and try to get something done I pulled out these beef shanks yesterday out of the freezer downstairs. We need to get these cooked. So I'm going to make a beef vegetable soup today. So I need to get these in the simmer before I go outside. It's uh, probably 2 in the afternoon. So this will uh, be simmered down. We'll add everything else before we eat tonight. So I got my crock pot pan that comes out of there. It's called a rock crock. It's from Pampered Chef. So we're going to, the good thing about this, this system is you can put this on the stove, you can put it in the oven, or you can put it in its base for the crock pot cooking. But I've got it on the stove so we can sear our meat in here before we actually use it as a crock pot. Got our beef shanks here in the pot. We're going to season them up with a little more of our favorite seasoning. Buddy Steve brought this to me from California. Because I was out. I can get it on Amazon, but it's a lot more expensive. So we're going to brown these bones up real nice so it gives us lots of flavor. Alright, we flipped our bones over and we seasoned the other side. Now the other side is browned real good. You can see we got some real good marrow in those bones. That's going to make some fantastic soup. So we're going to go in with some hot water now. We're going to come up over the top of those bones about like that. Maybe a little more. And then we're going to let these simmer. It's going to take a couple hours. They're going to simmer until we can pull those bones out. They'll slip right out of the meat. Now our meat is just returned to a simmer. So we'll put the lid on it now and then we'll transfer it to our slow cooker base. So we can go outside and do a few things that need to get done. Alright, I need to go out into the barn. We uh, harvested a pig this last weekend, and I got to go tidy up a little bit from that. And uh, got to put some stuff away, got to put some trap tractor implements away. The guineas heard me out here, so now they're wanting to get their 15 seconds of fame. The dogs are playing on this beautiful day. First things first, we'll get the tractor out. I got to put away my pallet forks and this pallet we use for harvesting our pig and then our stump wrecker buckets out here also we just uh, need to get them put away out of the yard out here
these are bones left from processing the pig. We're going to take some of them over and give them to the chickens because the chickens, if you didn't know, are carnivores and they love this kind of stuff. And they'll pick everything right off of those bones. Well, the chickens are literally in hog heaven. So the rest of the stuff the chickens don't get have been put in this hole that we dug out with the tractor. We just got to cover this hole up. And if you're thinking about getting guineas, that's what you're going to have to deal with all the time. So buyer beware. Okay, we're all done with the tractor. We're still waiting for the guy to call us back on the windmill here that needs to go on our tower. We'll give him a call here in the next week or so to see uh, if he forgot about us. Got to grab all our tools here. We'll take them in so we can get them washed up in the house. Now, if you're interested in learning how to process your own animal or your pig or whatever you've got going on um, we've got a whole playlist full of videos on how to do that we did a real good video on that last year called bullet to bacon goes through the whole process of butchering uh, curing the meat smoking the meat packaging the meat uh, breaking down the carcass everything you need to know so go check it out if that's an interest of yours kelly get all the the battery Operated lights put on the wreath that she uh, puts above the chicken coop over here So it's ready to go up. I'll throw that up there real quick There she is Looks pretty cool. She's got a decoration. She's putting down here that we got at junk jaunt That she's gonna be putting there. It's an old nest box. She's gonna put some Flowers and stuff in the guineas have been really enjoying their enclosure over here been keeping them out of the wind Gonna make a run out here and check on the garden. I got the rototiller, there's still gas in it, and I didn't know if I was gonna have to come back out here and uh, run one more time over the garden before winter really set in. So let's check it out real quick. Now uh, it's still looking good out here, so I think we can go ahead and winterize the rototiller. This thing is ready to go for spring. Can't wait to get back out here. It's only going to be a few months before we can start doing a few things. Most of my friends out in the western states, they're able to get in their garden around March 1st. However, it's May 1st for us, but around April 1st, we can get stuff here in the greenhouse and get it going. With this warm weather we have this week, guess what else we need to get back on? This thing right here. I didn't think I was going to be able to paint anything for the cubby here because uh, winter has kind of set in here, but we've got mid 50s temperatures all this week. So I'm gonna take advantage of that. I need to paint everything that we removed from the rear of the tractor here, and we can get that installed. So be looking out for that video. But what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take our rototiller out. We're gonna get it fired up and we're gonna run all the gas out of it. All right, we got that running. Now we've got to run back out to the barn, get the uh, lawnmower ready for winter. All right, lawnmower runs. Still got a good battery in it, but we want to keep it that way. So we've got a battery maintainer mounted in here. Just got to get her plugged in. Okay, we are plugged in and it is charging. Now without that battery maintainer, we would come back to this lawnmower in the spring and that battery would be dead as a doornail because uh, if they're not cycled all the time and charged can, uh, regularly, they'll just die on you, especially those little batteries like motorcycle batteries and lawnmower batteries, they just will not last. Now everything around here that runs on gas that has a battery in it, we have a maintainer on. We got a maintainer on the boat. We got a maintainer on our camp trailer. We got a maintainer on our little quad over there. We've got a maintainer on our generator uh, in the shop that runs the whole house in case uh, we lose power out here in the country. 
So everything with the battery is maintained. And these are smart maintainers where they'll actually cycle the battery. They don't just put on a constant charge because uh, if they did that, they would burn the battery out. All right, everything in the barn is complete. You can see the neighbor's cows out here in the corn stalks. We woke up this morning, about half of them were in our yard out here. The uh, fence charger went down overnight and they walked through the wire fence. There's only one, one hot wire all the way around that field, keeping those cows in there on those corn stalks. So a uh, neighbor had to come this morning and herd some cows back into his field out here. Well now I need to head inside. I've got to get my cold weather gear put together and put into the truck because it won't be long we'll be below zero temps and uh, if you get stranded on the road you're going to want that stuff. So I got this bag. I used this as a gear bag out in California when I used to shoot aerial fireworks. Aerial fireworks are illegal in California so the only way you can do it is if you're doing a professional job where they have the aerial fireworks and I used to be one of the shooters so this was my gear bag. I had to have a hard hat, I had to have a fire suit, this is my goggles, and then uh, had a hammer to put uh, racks together and then had some stuff I forgot about in here, some of my headlamps, flashlight, I wonder if it still works, hey it still works, and then safety scissors, these scissors do not create friction, so when you're cutting fuses, uh, there's no chance of creating a spark or anything like that, so those are cool to have around. But I'm going to unload this bag and put my winter gear in this bag because uh, I need to put it in the back seat in the truck, and Ruby rides with me all the time in the back seat, and I don't want her hair all over my clothes that are going to be in here. It can get on the outside of the bag, that's fine. So let's get this stuff unloaded and then I'll get this downstairs and start putting my gear in it. So in my bag I put my insulated uh, bib overalls. Those can go on right over your clothes. The legs open up, it's really nice. And then a nice heavy Carhartt jacket. And then my insulated gloves. And then a nice hat to put on. And then I even got a face cover that uh, covers your face up. So we'll get it all stuffed in our bag, all packed up. Love this bag. It's got really nice handles on it that will fasten together. Or you can even carry it from the end like a duffel bag. Pretty sweet. We're going to go put it in the truck. Almost forgot. Got to put some water in here. And then next time we're at the store, we'll get some non-perishable food items and put in here. Alrighty, we are packed up, ready for winter. Even got some Ruby Brandy snacks there. Some of y'all may think that is overkill, but it's really not. It'll actually keep you from being killed. If you, for some reason, are out in bad weather and there's times that you're going to get caught, uh, you can't always predict what the weather's going to do around here. Um, if you slide off the road and your truck won't run or whatever, if you run out of gas, you're going to need something to bundle up with because it gets 30 below out here in the Midwest. And if you're in that very long without protection, you're not going to make it. And some of you may say, well, there's going to be cars going by on the road and this and that. and Snow plows will go by or whatever. Well, around here, they usually don't run the plows out till the morning. And if it's bad weather, people just don't go out. Uh, it's a smart thing just to stay home. Everybody has what they need at home. Uh, all your employers are understanding that if it's bad weather, you're not going to make it or you're going to be late for work. So there's not always that help out there that we need on the side of the road. So you got to be prepared out here in the Midwest. How are you doing, Rubes? You ready to go in the house? Yeah? When my uh, buddy Steve was still here, we went around and we drained all of our hoses so the hoses aren't froze up. And uh, we can still use our hydrants if need be. And then if we use them, we drain the hoses again because the hydrants will drain. If you're not familiar with Midwest uh, faucets, once you close that, the water drains back down to the ground about five feet so it doesn't freeze your pipe up. So other than coming back out later and turning that, uh, putting that rototiller in the barn once it runs out of gas, 
we just about got the place out here winterized. Let's go in and finish our soup. You want to go in, Rubes? Should I go in? Yeah? I put our pot back on the stove because it just wasn't boiling hard enough in our base. Our bones have all boiled out. All the marrow's bone boiled out of them. So now we have our wonderful stock in here with our beef. It's about an hour before supper, so we're going to go ahead and add our vegetables. So with about an hour to go, we're going to add our vegetables. We got about a half a cup each of carrots, celery, onion. This is the celery that we got out of the garden and froze. We chopped it all up. And about four cloves worth of garlic. And then we're going to add all of that into the pot. And then over the next hour, that's going to cook down. All those vegetables are going to get soft, and they're going to give up their flavor into our soup. So we'll get the lid back on this. Well, let's get some aromatics out of the cupboard. So for our aromatics, we've got about a teaspoon of dry thyme, which is always a good addition. If you've never used herbs before, put a teaspoon of your dry thyme in your soup. You're really uh, going to enjoy that. And then we also added some about a teaspoon of dry rosemary. And we'll get that in the pot. And uh, all that hot liquid will wake those up. All right, we're going to bring this back up to a simmer. Doesn't that look amazing? So right before we eat, I'm going to take this meat out. And we'll cut it into bite-sized pieces if it hasn't fallen apart a little bit. And then we're going to throw about a half a pound of your favorite pasta in here, noodles, for the soup. Now, if you didn't want to go the soup route, you could put in some potatoes. You'd put those in there now with the rest of the vegetables. And then you'd have more of a stew. You could thicken it a little bit with a roux and uh, have a real nice beef stew. But we're going to go the soup route on this. Now, when we go to add the noodles, if there's not enough liquid in the pot... We will top up with some of our good bone broth. Uh, we'll put some of that in there so there's enough moisture for the noodles. But I think we may be okay. Our soup has uh, boiled for about an hour after we had the veggies in. And it was really thick, like a stew almost. So we added about a cup of water. We were okay not adding our bone broth because there's plenty of flavor in that. So I'm going to add... Two cups of pasta, use any kind you like, and then get that down into the liquid. And then that's only going to take probably 10 minutes for that pasta to cook. We'll put the cover on this. And it's almost soup. Homemade soup is so easy to make if you've never made it. Uh, just get you some meat if you want. You don't even have to use meat, but... Uh, Saute some stuff in a pan, add some water and some spices. Um, I like to use the Trinity for any time I make soup, which is celery, onion, and carrot. Uh, about equal parts of each, about a half a cup or so, unless you're making a big, big pot, then go with a cup. And whatever your favorite spices are, and you have soup. It's that simple. Uh, I hope you try making soup if you never have. Our pasta is done. I tasted for seasoning, I added about a half a teaspoon of garlic salt, and that uh, brought it right up to what we needed. So doesn't that look amazing? Beef noodle soup with the veggies in it. Let's stir some up. There we go. Time to sit down for supper. I've already tasted it. It tastes phenomenal. So we are going to sit down and eat supper and call it a day, relax a little bit, take a shower, go to bed. We've got uh, big goings on this week. We're going to get out in that shop. We're going to get some stuff done out there on some of those projects that have been waiting. So until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you guys. Come back and see us here at Mark Kelly Farm.